Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. So with introducing Pastor Chris and his wife, I, I decided I'm going to do a standalone sermon. Uh, this is just going to be a one-off. It's not in a series. It's going to be a transition sermon between talking about serving and next month we're going to be talking about missions. And, and don't think that we're going to like sign everybody up to go on a missions trip and all that, but we're going to talk about local missions, um, global missions, and, and what your mission is in this life. But today I want to talk about seasons and reasons. Seasons and reasons. The secret to living for God and fulfilling God's will in your life and God's call in your life is found in knowing the season that you are in. When the season changes, the reason changes. And when your reason changes, your season changes. All right? Now listen, that happens to us a lot in life. A lot of times in life, seasons change. And we're not just talking about the weather but yes, we are talking about, see, I love winter. I love winter. I could skip fall and go right to winter. How many are with me? <laughs> Two of you. I live in New York because I love winter. I love me some snow. Six inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, 24, 36. Don't matter to me. I love it. I love it. Best time to go to the mall and go out shopping is in the middle of a snowstorm. Because y'all skirt and stuck in your house, I get to go out and drive. Nobody's on the highway. No one's in my way. I got the four-wheel drive. I love it. I could skip fall. As much as I love fall, I could skip it and go right to winter and only four people were with me. Yet, many of us want to skip seasons in our lives. We want to skip seasons. We want to, we want to skip the the diaper changing season and go right to toddlers. <laughs> we want to skip the terrible twos and go right to the threes. I wish this was over. I wish, I wish we could just move on, just skip seasons. And, and many times when we want to skip seasons, it's because we don't trust the process. We don't trust the life process that we find ourselves in and the moments that we find ourselves in. There aren't too many who would want to skip fall and go to winter but there are many of you that do not like the season that you're in in life, and you would e gladly skip this season and go to the next. Yet the thing about seasons is that there's no guarantee that the next season is going to be better than the season you're in. There's no guarantee that we're going to have a snowy season, a snowy winter. We might not have any snow, and it might be 75 degrees all winter, global warming. I don't know. I, I look forward to winter because I'm assuming that that season's going to bring things that bring me joy. Making snowmen, making snowballs, making snow angels, plowing my driveway. I enjoy those things. But there's no guarantee that if I skip fall and the beautiful leaf changes and the apple picking and the pumpkin picking and the pumpkin carving, if I skip it, there's no guarantee that winter is going to bring me what I expect. And I think that's what ends up happening in the seasons of life. We're discontent in this season, hoping that the next season's going to be better without any guarantee. Then we create expectations that aren't met, then we're let down, and I want to skip to the next season. How hard is it, many times, to be content in the season that we're currently in if things aren't going our way. It's very hard. It's very hard. Have you ever heard someone say to you, just enjoy the season that you're in? Just enjoy the time of the life that you're in? Enjoy your kids while they're young. It goes by so fast. You ever heard these kind of things? Yeah, it's, it's the warning who someone who's rushed through their life is saying to you, man, remember the little moments. Remember the small moments because they will pass you by quick. 
We're going to look at a book of the Bible today called Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're not going to beat ourselves up with Ecclesiastes. I think that book's used to really do a lot of damage to people. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it's a little bit different book than other books that you may have read. The book is written in an observatory nature, an observation style. King Solomon wrote this book not to show how things should be. He's simply stating the way things are. Did I, did I lose you on that? He's not writing a book on how we should live, how things should be. He's stating simply how things are. From my observation, I'm showing you what's happening. And man, the word should is such a nasty word. Life should be easier. I should have done this. Things shouldn't be going this way. But it is. But it is. And life is what it is in this moment. It's not a matter of should or could or would. It just is. This is where we get discontent in seasons. It shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be like this. We shouldn't be in a pandemic. But we are. It is what it is. So how are we going to make the best of the season we're in. My marriage should not have ended, but it did. It did. So now, what are we gonna do with that season that you find yourself in? My family members shouldn't have passed away, but they did. It's not a matter of should or could or would. It's simply what is. It happened. So now, does that mean that everybody that's connected to you has to be miserable because you're living in a world of should instead of what is? Okay, I'm not trying to get too deep psychologically, but this is how this book is written. We get stuck in this idea of the way things should, but let's take a look at this in Ecclesiastes 1, or Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, and it says this, to everything... There is a season. To what there is a season? Everything. Everything. Everything there's a season, right? It's not strawberry season right now. Is it strawberry season? No. Good. It's not strawberry season right now. To everything there's a season. And it's not just talking about a season for fruits and veggies and when you can hunt, when you can't hunt, what kind of animals are in season, when you're going fishing. Everything has a season. Our lives have a season. Can we just go straight there? Like in a, in a woman's physiology, there's a season that she can have children, and then there's a season that she can no longer have children. Seasons. Okay, we get this. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Now he breaks it down. Solomon just goes. He's just saying what it is. A time to be born and a time to die. A time, oh man, and, and, and that's another sermon. Another sermon. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to wipe and a time to laugh. A time to a weep. I'm sorry, wipe. <laughs> what are we wiping? Eyes, eyes, eyes. <laughs> Unless you have babies. A time to mourn <laughs> and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, like COVID. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors. I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of man are to be occupied. Now, this is what he's saying about God. God, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Do you know what that means? That there are certain things that out of season are not beautiful. 
There's been some decisions that you've tried to make out of season, and the result of that has not been beautiful. But when we make decisions in the right time, in the right season, they are beautiful. He makes all things beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Basically, he's saying, no one's going to know time. No one's going to know time frame. No one's going to know exactly when the, when the season starts and when the season ends. That's why we got to talk to God. That's why I got to have a relationship with him. Lord, what season am I in? What am I called to do? What should I do? Or what I, am I called to be doing in this season? Life happens in seasons. Life happens in seasons. Pastor Chris and his family were in a season for five years at their church in Florida. And that season began to come to an end. Where he says, you know, we're feeling an urging to, to go into a next season, a next calling, a next place. We ended up connecting in the right timing, in the right season. And, and, and my advertisement and his resume almost spoke the exact same language because it's beautiful in its time. In its time. When you hang around somewhere too long, you start to spoil, you start to rot, you start to rot. A fruit hanging on a tree too long inevitably begin to rot. A fruit plucked too early isn't ripe, and it's sour, and it's tart. But all things are beautiful in their time. Ephesians 1, 9 and 10 says this, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ. A plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And this is the plan. Here it is. At just the right time. When? Just the right time. In the right season. In the right generation. In the right culture. In the right land. At just the right time. He'll bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. We got to trust the process. We got to trust the process. Ecclesiastes tells us how hard it is many times to perceive the seasons that we're in in our lives. And he says that they're hidden from us. Sometimes they're hidden from us. You know why? Because if you knew what three seasons down the road was going to be, you would try to make it happen. You'd try to make it happen. That's why there's a verse in the Bible that says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that's, that, that's an actual statement. They had sandals with laces up to their knee. And they would attach lanterns, oil lanterns, to the laces of their sandals so that they could carry objects while they walked. It wasn't enough light like a flashlight to show down the path. It was enough light to show the next step. It was enough light to show if there was a stumbling block at the next step. It was enough light to know if there was a pitfall at the next step. It would not show them way down the path. It would show me what's next. And then what's next. And then what's next. And I had to be intentional. You had to be intentional about what that step was going to look like. Paul comes along at the New Testament and he says this. I'm going to reveal to you some secrets. I'm going to reveal to you what the big next season is, the next big move is. He says that Christ's going to come, he's going to die, he's going to be risen again, and he's going to come back for his people. And he says then he's going to bring all things under the authority of God. God declares to us that there is a divine calling and a divine timing to everything in our lives. Here's one mistake that a lot of people make, especially People who have lived unhealthy lives, and now they have found some sort of freedom, maturity, adulthood, they look back at their life and say, oh, the wasted years. If I could just get back sometime, but you can't. It is what it is. And at this point in your life, and let me just say this, at this point in your life, that's neither good nor bad, it just is. Something you cannot change it's neither good nor bad, it just is. That was me. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. 
But what has not changed is my mind, and I remember what I've done. I remember who I was. So instead of living in the past of things I can't change, I should have done things differently, but you did not. We now can say, this next season that I am in, I will use those things that the enemy meant for evil, and I will allow God to use them for his good. I will use the broken pieces of my past, the misstep seasons of my past, to let God paint a beautiful picture of what's to come because he makes all things beautiful in its time. In Daniel 2.19, it says this, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and in what dwells in the light. I thank you and I praise you, O God, my Father. You have given wisdom and might, and you have now made known to me what we have asked of you. I'm just, just wondering, Instead of complaining about the season that we're in in life and different seasons, could we ask God, how can I praise you in this season? What's the blessing in this season amongst all the things that look like curses? Now again, I'm not saying, I am not saying, and I do not believe that God puts you in bad seasons of life. I did not say that. I believe that there is a devil who prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. I believe that there are bad seasons in life because it's life. And we live in a fallen, destitute world. But even in the storm, even in a bad season, God is there. Did you notice, have you ever noticed when you read the Bible that the disciples are stuck in a boat during a storm and God didn't just wake up and stop the storm and protect them? He let it happen. I mean, because he was sleeping. He let the storm happen because it was there. Because, Because there's something that God knows, that even when you're caught up in a storm, you're protected. Even when you're caught up in a storm, he's there. The problem is is our eyes are so much on the storm. Our eyes are so much on the crap, on the pain and the hurt that we forget who's in our boat, who's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, lives and dwells on the inside of me. This boat doesn't sink with the God Almighty Creator on the inside of me. But when our eyes are on the storm, and we give in to the storm, and we give up to a bad season, and we become defe- and we allow ourselves to be defeated by a season, God is saying, but I'm right here. I'm right here. Would you lean in on me? Would you call upon me? Would you recognize that I'm with you? It is God who changes the seasons, but we have to lean into the God of the seasons. Don't you wish that he would sometimes just post a schedule? <laughs> I tell like, okay, December 15th, your season's going to change. January is the month that you're going to retire. That's when you should do it. June is the month that you're going to have kids, and that's the time that you should go for that. Don't you, I mean, don't you wish that there was like a, a season of life schedule that needs to be put out there? I wish, I wish. But that's what makes living today difficult is that God is not saying, okay, listen, everybody, I'm going to talk to Pastor Mike, I'm going to tell him what is up, and then he's going to tell you all. You know what's difficult about the Christian life? Is that God wants to speak to each of us individually every day. And that makes it hard. Because not everybody wants to talk to God every day. Make it easy for me, God. Make it simple for me. Take me to a better season. 
He says, but how about we just spend some time together? Right? We get so caught up in getting blessings from God that we forget about the God of the blessing. We want protecting from God, we forget the God of the protecting. Come on, somebody. You know when your kids just want you to buy them more and more sneakers, but they don't ever want to actually hang out with you? Come on, right? Now, my kids know how to manipulate me. They know how to manipulate me. Hey, Poppy, you want to go to the mall? I'll buy you Starbucks. Hang out with you, spend the day, do a little date. They know they do that. They get whatever they want. We're going shopping. We're coming out bags. But if they come to me and are like, hey, can I have $50 for sneakers? That's all they get. That's what you want. That's what you ask for. That's all you get. Now, again, that's me being human. I don't believe God's really that way. But do we come to God and say, you know, Lord, I'm coming to you today just to spend time with you, asking nothing of you? Asking nothing of you. Those who abide in me and my word abides in them. They can ask anything, and it shall be done for them for my Father in heaven. It's, it's the idea of abiding. Can you abide in God even when you're stuck in a bad season? To somebody. So I want to take the Old Testament truth of Solomon and the New Testament of Paul, and I want to put them together. And I want to tell you this today. God created your life in light of eternity. God did not create your life in light of your lifespan. We are limited to the knowledge of time. We are limited to the, to the knowledge of time and space, and everything that we view in life is in the, it's in the mindset of a lifespan. So let's just say that that's 100 years. Everything you do and every decision you make is in light of a hundred years. Not God. Everything God has ever done is in light of eternity. And you are but one season of eternity in his plan. Dude, this is wild. You can, I mean, I can get lost in brain space for like three hours thinking about that. Our lives operate in seasons. There was a season that you were in diapers and now you're not. But that you will be again. So. Say it again, Valor. Our lives happen in seasons, and this means, ready? This is what this means. Everything God ever wanted to do through your life was decided before your life ever began. Woo! Everything God has ever wanted to do through your life was decided before your life ever began. There was a blueprint. There was a blueprint stamped on your heart. That doesn't mean you followed it. Come on, somebody. You know you tried putting together that crib without looking at the instructions. And you had 12 bolts left over. Oh, no, no, they gave extras. We didn't, we didn't need those. We didn't need those. <laughs> I wish that the package would say, no extra parts included. <laughs> But you don't experience all the things that God has decided for your life before your life began all at once. How many cars have you had in your lifetime? Several. Brett, a lot. Brett has a lot. Brett goes through a lot of cars, right? He didn't get all of the cars that he's ever had at one time. There's seasons. Some of you lease cars. So two to three years, you get a new car every season. You don't get all of the cars you're ever going to have in life at one time. You get them in seasons. You don't get all the knowledge 
in your mind that you're going to get of God all at one time, a download when you're a believer. It comes in phases and seasons and growth. God's decided to plan for your life, but they come to you in seasons. And Paul said that God is working all of these things to happen through you. But here's my problem. I want to skip fall and go to winter. I want to skip the season I'm in. Because I'm tired of the season I'm in. I'm in like a building season. And I keep building and I'm building and I'm building. And I'm like, man, when do I get to sit back and chill? Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. When I get to the chill season. When do I get the weekend off season? I want to skip a season. Especially when you're in a season that's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable seasons are no fun. Because the thing that we want to do more than anything is just jump back into comfort. I want to go back to the way things were. But you can't. Because you're here now. We're here now. It seems many times that we see someone else's season. And we say, ah, I'll trade it in mine. I'll take some of that. Give me some of that season. But you're only a visitor viewing their season from the outside. You don't know what they've been going through. The season I'm in might kill you. The season you're in might destroy me. Because everything that you've been in through life, every trial, every mistake, every win, every sin has prepared you for the season you're in right now. It's prepared you for the season you're in right now. You might have got your brains bashed in in the last season. It was to give you some strength and some fortitude for the next battle that you're going to face. I'm not saying that God did that to prepare you. What I am saying is God will use what the enemy meant for evil for his glory and prepare you for the next phase of life. Hey, man, don't ever look at a scar and say, oh, if I didn't have... Man, that scar is the character for the next season. Florida sure nice for me to visit. My boy over here is going to be in a rude awakening when winter comes. <laughs> they thought it was chilly this morning. <laughs> Woo! They're like, ooh, is it always this chilly in the morning? like to visit Florida in the winter. I ain't going to Florida in the summer. I ain't going to Florida in the summer. I was just out in, in Arizona. It was 97 degrees at 5 a.m. on our hike. Wow. Uh, you can keep that. You can keep it, but it's a dry heat. So is a bonfire, but I'm not sticking my face in it. <laughs> that junk is hot. I don't want it. I like winter, right? It's like I want to jump into winter. I'm ready to go. You see it differently when you're on the outside. Yeah. Kayla keeps talking about, Kayla, Kayla calls every pine tree a Christmas tree. <laughs> Look at all the Christmas trees. No, that's not a Christmas tree. Every pine tree is a Christmas tree. I just can't wait for the snow. You realize it has to be below 20 degrees, right? <laughs> snow looks cute. From Florida. <laughs> but when she's out there with a shovel and she gets that first scoop, it looks so light and fluffy online. <laughs> Why is this so heavy? <laughs> Someone sees and looks better from the outside until you're the one living in that season and the grass is not greener on the other side. It's just another shade of green. It's just another element, it's just another yard. Looking at someone else's season and wishing you were there may be cool to visit, but different if you live there. And this is what I want to set you free from today in the next six minutes. 
is the continuous straining and striving to live someone else's season and not being happy where you are. In Scottsdale last weekend, thank you for letting me go and having the weekend off. I do appreciate that. Um, we did this 5 a.m. hike up a mountain. It was a silent hike. We weren't allowed to talk. The mission of the hike was uh, we, had, we had book bag. Every, every guy had a book bag. And in that book bag, there was two rocks. And one of those rocks, when we got to the top of the mountain, we were going to have to take it out. We are going to have to write on it with a Sharpie marker. Something that we needed to leave at the top of that mountain. Something that we've been struggling with. One word symbolizing a situation in our lives that we need to stop. It needed to end. And it could be anything. Multiple guys were way different things. We talked about it later. But you couldn't talk because you had to meditate upon what that was going to be by the time you got to the mountain, top of the mountain. So we walk up this thing. We're going up this mountain. We get there. And one by one, each guy had to write something on a rock, stand at the edge of the cliff, and throw it off the mountain because you couldn't take it back. We got back down the mountain, we got to one of our conference sessions and went kind of around the room talking very vulnerable about what our experiences were and one guy said this, he said, it was the best morning I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm like, dude, 97 degree, hike in the heat, top of the mountain, I've had much better mornings. <laughs> he says, no, it was the first time in my life that my head was in the same place as my feet. He's like, when I'm at home, my mind is at work. When I'm at work, my mind is about going and making more business. And my, my head and my feet are never in the same place. He says, today was the first day that my mind and my feet were in the same place. The guy had a mind shift about the season he was in. Appreciating a little bit more that he had young kids at home that needed his attention a wife at home that needed his attention. So many times we can be discontent with the season that we're in that we miss the moments. I can't live your season, you can't live mine. Touch someone next to you says, you can't live my season. Touch them, say, you can't live my season. You can't live my season. And they can't live yours. You can't fix their season. You can't change their season, and you can't push them to the next. It just is what it is. It's taken 35 years of experience to prepare me where I'm at today. Time and time again. Here's a couple main points that I close the next three minutes. There's a struggle in every season. There's a struggle in every season. Even in your best seasons, there's a struggle. You know, what, you know what the struggle of a best season is? You want to stay in that season. That's a struggle. Getting locked in a best season. Getting locked in that season. Even in the good season, the blessed seasons, the more than enough seasons, there are struggles. We were never created to live on the mountaintop. We will have mountaintops in our lives. We will have big, huge wins in our lives, but we're not going to live there. Each mountaintop is, is the momentum on the downslope to get to the next bigger top. But we got to use that momentum, and there's going to be a down to come to that next top. There's a struggle in every season. Point number two, every season is shaped by the words you use to describe your season. Dude, that, oh, if we could get this. If we could get this, every season is shaped by the words that we use to describe our season. What's coming out your mouth? Are you building up the season that you're in? Or are you tearing it down? Are you building up those around you? Are you speaking life into your morning? Are you speaking life into your day? Or are you destroying it? I hate my job. Then quit. Amen. Quit. Your boss deserves better than that. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. But your boss does. He deserves better than a bunch of people who signed a contract that hate coming to work every day. Even if he's the problem. <laughs> or she's the problem. Whoever it is. Even if they're the problem. You, you signed up for that. We signed up for that. So move on. 
Go to the next place. If you're not happy with the things that are happening where you're at, then change your environment. Speak better words. Speak words that are going to build the environment that you want to live in. There will be times when you endure a season that you're not happy with, but God is still in the season because God makes everything beautiful in its time. I want to ask you this today. What season are you in? Hebrews 5.12 says this. For when by reason of time you ought to be teachers, you have need again that someone teach you the basics. There's some people who've been in church a long time, and your next season is to share your faith with others. Is to start a small group, a connect group. Uh, um, um, an outreach program, an in-reach program, a missions program, something. By virtue of time, by the length of time that you've been a believer in Jesus Christ, your next season is to instruct. Your next season is to help. I just wonder how many believers get stuck in the season of Christian immaturity and never step to Christian maturity. The college that we are starting here might be a great next step for some of you. Get into that college program, get your degree, get your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, and then when you come out the backside of that, you're in a position to begin to teach and help others in their walk in their faith. Maybe you need to sign up for our Fam Life Leadership Program that's starting in just a few weeks. Maybe you need to get set up in that and, and, and finish the leadership programs that we have here so that you can be a leader in the church and take that next step. Maybe you need to... Join our Thursday night Celebrate Recovery program because although you've been in church a long time, you still got some major habits, hurts, and hang-ups that you haven't dealt with yet and you need to leave some at the top of a mountain somewhere so by the virtue of time, you can help and assist others. I don't know what season you are in, but I will tell you this. God is making shifts in the land today because he says it's time that we begin to make beauty out of ashes once again. <laughs> beauty out of ashes. And I don't care where you are in your life, God wants to speak through you and use you where you are. Some of you, the season you're in, God wants to use you in your home raising good kids. So be there. Be connected to what God is doing in your life. I want to take a moment and pray for you today. That you would realize and see that God is at work and he's in the season you're in. If we'd get our eyes off of the struggle and our eyes on the Savior, there's some... All right, I'm going to go here. I'm stepping into it. There's somebody in here today that you feel like it's someone else's fault that your season that you're in is ending. But I would tell you that God has already opened a door for your next season. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that person who's a knucklehead who's got you all upset, you wouldn't have stepped out of your comfort zone to go into the open door that God already has for you. There, 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 there's somebody that, that your current situation is getting so uncomfortable that you're being forced out the nest and you wouldn't want it that way. But could God be at work in that? A mama bird loves her babies, but she got to boot them out the nest to fly. There's an open door waiting for you to walk in. But let thy word, that is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, show you your next step. And the problem with the next step is that between this stance of stability and this stance of the stability is unbalance. And it's faith that gets you through the unbalance. It's faith that gives you a stance here before it's here. This is faith. God, I'm not really sure where this foot's gonna land, but I'm trusting that where this foot lands, you are in it. 
Spirit of God, we thank you today for speaking to our hearts in a true prophetic way today. That whatever we heard is filtered through the lenses of your word. That your word would speak truth louder than what our conscious reality might want us to believe. I pray that our spirit man would receive this word with all joy and all gladness. That our spirit would speak to our consciousness mind, our conscious mind. And lead us down a path that you've designed. Because you have made all things beautiful in its time. We submit to your timing. We submit to the seasons. Lord, I pray that when the season changes, we would find the new reason. And when our reason changes, you'd help us move into the new season. Lord, I pray today that your spirit would touch us. If you're in here today and you've never had the opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd like to lead you in a prayer for salvation today. And here at Family Church, we make it very simple. We wanna pray a prayer with you out loud. The Bible says that with the mouth, confession is made, and with the heart, we believe unto salvation. So if you're here today and you say, hey man, this message is tugging at my heart, I'm feeling something going on inside of me, and you know that Jesus is calling you to the Christian world and to, into eternal life with him, we'd like to offer that to you today. And that prayer goes like this, if you'd say it with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and follow up with you and give you our six-day devotional that's called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, hey, that was me. I prayed that for the first time today. Anybody at all real quick as I go across the room? Wave. Nobody. Yes. No. Maybe. Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Awesome. We have that same devotional available for you at the Welcome Center. It's called Starting Point. It will get you started in your walk with the Lord. Let me bless you today. Father, we thank you and praise you that your word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, for the season that we're in. We can rejoice and be glad that you are in it with us. So now we lean in on you. Lead us, guide us, direct us to the steps that we need to take to promote and to move the kingdom forward. Lord, we are blessed today. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.